Hello, everybody. Hi, everybody. I'm Ilana Kravitz in London, and I'm delighted to introduce Alicia Spiegels from New York. She's going to kick off with uh, Nigden for the day. Alicia, what have you got for us? Thank you, Ilana. I'm going to play number 42. Sounds good. Yeah, they all have numbers. Um, and the numbers all have mystical significance, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, what that significance is, um, uh, I'm taking a poll. 42, six times seven. Thank you. Oh, what a beautiful start. Oh. How have you found them? Did you know any already of the well, tunes I sent you? I kind of cheated on that one because I actually recorded that one on my album Beragovsky Suite, which is a record of all Beragovsky Nigunim uh, that I recorded with pianist Uli Geisendorfer, who is a virtuosic jazz pianist uh, who lives in Las Vegas now. And uh, he played the tunes with me in a way that reflected his other influences and expanded the harmonic vocabulary behind them. Um, well, I, um, I improvise a bit, but I stick to that traditional klezmer style. So that's the link that I, you know, that I put in the chat for everybody. So I already knew this tune. I was playing it from memory, <laughs> but the other four I learned for this project, and I'm so glad that, Alana, that you did this, because otherwise I probably would have just been wa watching Netflix and, you know, maybe I'd bake some bread, I don't know. <laughs> but instead I learned four more Baragowski and Nguyenum, and, um, and they're terrific tunes. I mean, I... I had explored the instrumental volume, but I hadn't looked at the Nagunum, which uh, are, they were collected from singers, not instrumentalists, um, but they work very well on an instrument, on the fiddle. And they're really a treasure trove of new klezmer material for the klezmer music world. I'm glad you feel like that. Some people have returned them, you know. Some people have said, oh, I like this one, but I don't like this one so much, so I'm going to give it back. But you've really well, gone for it. You know, I didn't give any of them back um, because it, it, the whole process is really interesting. It's what, what they transcribed, what Beragovsky transcribed was just the melody. You know, he had a 
wax, portable wax cylinder recording device, which was already old technology, but it was portable. So he would go to a town square in a shtetl and get the local singers to sing into his recording horn. And so we don't know what the harmonies of the band were in those singers' heads as they were singing. We only have the melody. And um, that leads to interesting problems of interpretation, as we say in the music world. Um, because you read these tunes at first, and some of them it's like, what? What the heck? This makes no sense. Like, this is a tune? Like, where's the tonic? The tonic is the first note in the scale. You know, what? Is this in major or in minor? And, you know, that's some technical musical thing, but it's, it's interesting, so I'm going to demonstrate. For, you know, people who might not know, minor is... And major is... So um, some melodies on their own are ambiguous, and not till you hear them with the band, you really understand that melody. So it's sort of a reverse engineering problem. It's a puzzle. And I had a lot of fun sitting at the piano. And when I finally figured out what the harmonies probably were that went to them, I understood the melodies. And that's why I don't give any of them back. Because if at first they don't speak to you, it's probably because you haven't found the key to that lock yet. Mm. How about another one then? One of the ones that okay. really didn't speak to you when you started, but that you came to know. Well, you know what? I'm going to save those for next. But okay. for this one, I'm, I'm warming up here. So I'm going to play one that actually, it, it's not that way. So it'll be interesting to hear. This is really obvious to anybody who reads it, what the chords are. You know, it's for anybody who knows any Klezmer or Middle Eastern music or whatever. You know, even though it's having the gill, this is going to make sense musically. Um, so this is an obvious one. And then I'm going to follow it up with three completely unobvious ones and uh, show you what I did with them. Okay. I love the, the non-sound of two hands clapping on Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> Are you following straight up or do you want to take some questions? Ah, yeah, yeah. But we could take questions. If Everybody anybody's got like, that's not obvious at all. Like, what the heck was that? That's a question. <laughs> anybody got any questions? We got Ernie in Australia. Oh, Ernie, go ahead. Unmute yourself. Um, hi, uh, um, Alicia, I'm curious about um, how you choose to use chords or not. In uh, well that, interpreting. Yeah. Um, by the way, I failed to identify that. Uh, that was number 112. And, you know, again, if you, if you multiply 112 by 3, you do get um, 136, which is 100 plus double high. So, you know, just saying. Now, in terms of... In terms of um, chords, do you mean 
double stops like i was just doing yeah i mean yeah i mean cool i mean double stops yeah like, How do I I, you know, when do you choose to use them as opposed to you know being just the melody the straight melody well you know i was winging it and uh i used them a little prematurely in my opinion and so i stopped and then i did it at the right spot which was at the recap of the tune you know you do it when you, you want to kick things up a notch you know kick the energy up a notch when you're violin all alone that's like when your band comes in and you are the band so that's how i do that okay any other questions let's move on <laughs> okay. so um all right here comes the hard stuff wish me luck this is a world premiere literally world since people are here from australia and london and new york and it's just unbelievable the magic of zoom um so sheet music flying everywhere oh, here we go. this one this one is number 76 now that was interesting you sent that to me because that happens to be my good luck number for real um and it this is like what the only one i saw that has a, a title a langa nicker anybody know what that means a langa what is langa any yiddish just out there we're we're gonna have to find that out so number 76 um here we go you know what i'm gonna give you a sample of how this it was originally played i mean how it was sung the fact that it was sung. i'm gonna sing i'm gonna try to sing Thank you. 
does go off piece doesn't it <laughs> well honestly i added the measure now four notes of my own in there what did you think of them <laughs> no. nice good note. <laughs> <laughs> i like the fact that there's original notes in there alicia it brings it right up to date yeah I, I thought it needed four notes that were completely not in the mode of the key <laughs> so. <laughs> poetic license <laughs> Changing the subject for a second, I do have a question here from one of your fans. Um, he says he uh, your your CD, your actual physical CD, isn't available on CD Baby or on Amazon. Where can he get the the physical thing that he can hold in his hand? Is oh well, on, on Amazon, it, it is. Maybe the link I sent was like for the e version, but it, it is available on Amazon. I hope. Okay. Any problem? Write me on my website, and I'll just. Pop one in the mail, personally. She'll risk going to the post office just to send you her CD. Yeah, I'll wear a mask, glove. Disinfect the CD when you get it, please. Okay, well, we'll hope that that works. Gosh, I, I have another question, actually. Could, um, have we got time before you play your next one? Oh, you know what? Um, I'm going to send that link again because uh, we discovered this morning in the plague wedding out of San Diego that when people enter the room later, they don't see the stuff that was in the chat at the beginning. So I'm now going to send it again so everybody can see it. Okay. All right. Um, I'm sorry. What were, what were you saying? I was just going to say, um, I, I feel like... Um, there's, you've been so important in my klezmer development, but also you, um, I hate to say the klez grandma, but in this project, we've got Jake Shulman Ment, who was learning from you when he was an absolute baby, wasn't he? Yeah. And now we have Beth Silver, who's just spent a month learning with Jake in, in New York. She's from Toronto. Oh, man. That does make me a grandmother, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool one so young uh still you know be a grandmother incredible you've gone quiet alicia oh you've muted yourself okay <laughs> oh there we go okay good okay um so shall we move on to uh Meeting number 150. Let's. Oh, nice to meet, nice to meet you too, Beth. My, my klezmer granddaughter. <laughs> <laughs> that came in through the chat. Okay, so number 150. This one's really interesting. Um, uh, Ilana kindly translated, I think from the Russian, which is incredible, the introduction to um, this collection of Nagonim. Um, and I read it with great interest. And one of the things that it said um, was that these nigunim tended to be more in um, ma major keys, some minor, a lot of major, and almost none in the really super dark modes that we have in the, the instrumental music. The saddest it got was like what I just played you. And, um, so, and that was because uh, Hasidim, well, Nagunim were, were and aren't only Hasidic, but Hasidim were very big on like keeping it happy. And so this is one of those tunes. And this was the one that most perplexed me when I got it just as the melody. So maybe for fun, I'll play just the melody and then I'll go into how I think it ought to go. How's that? You know what? Maybe I'll sing just the melody. Okay, I'll see that. Uh, and you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to be bold and do it in a completely different key. Well, you can't really do it in a partially different key, right? Here it is. I'm going to do it in a different key than they put. The keys are, we're all fake anyway. They put everything in this collection G and like, uh, so, wait, yeah. I did, I did, I did. 
It's very jolly. It is, and it made no sense at first. Did you, did you check it out, Alana, when you said before you sent it to me? Do you know what? I gave myself five. I've um, like been looking at those ones. What? <laughs> I worry about the other thirty-four of you. I said I can't worry. Be worrying about the other thirty-four of you. I've got my own to worry I know, about. I know. Um, I had hoped you mastered the entire collection before you sent them out to us, but okay. Depends how long Boris has us in lockdown. Oh wait, he's just let us out. <laughs> oh, there's a the toughest one. You know, this is like this is actually an amazing uh, simulacrum of what goes on on stage for me, where the papers are flying everywhere. It's like no different in my living room. It's ridiculous. Okay, I got it. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the, the chat wishes, the happy Mother's Day wishes. Um, any questions about Beragovsky 150? Patty wants to know where it's recorded, that last what? one. Patty wants to know where that last one's recorded. I don't think it is. Number one. Um, where he collected it from. Uh, I've got it here. It was the. Uh, it was I Berman in the town of Olika in the Volin region, but I think I Berman, yeah, that was there is one that was actually recorded. And there's a picture of that band. I showed it in my little Berubogovsky talk the other day. There's a picture of that this I Berman and his uh, band. Oh, Berman, right? So. It's very Polish sounding, right? It's like it sounds like Polish folk music. Carpathian or something, right? Yeah. Mm. Um. So the last one. The last one's kind of solemn. Is that okay? We could do a reprise of the fast one. 
this one is number four. And um, yeah, actually, it, it is dance music. Uh, you know, nigunim are not just sung, they're also often dance, dancing and singing at the same time. Um, and that was totally, not only was that a dance tune, I think it was a pach dance, a clapping dance. <laughs> I'm totally hearing the patch figure in there. Um, so this one, number four, uh, Alana, this is a question for you. It says in that introduction that, okay, Berigovsky writes in, the, in that introduction that some of the tunes didn't make sense to him. And in particular, he singles out this number four. And he says, the ending doesn't make sense, but the rest of the tune's good, so we left it in there. I don't know, is it the same number four? Because this ending makes total sense to me. Anyway, get back to us about that, okay? All right, number four. And by the way, back to, you know, numerology, how many mothers are there in Jewish mythology? Four, and it's Mother's Day. So I'm ending this with num number four. Arbe imot, right?
Should I unmute everybody just so you can hear them all? Oh. Oh. Bravo! Thank you. Thank you everybody for coming. It's great to see your lovely faces and the um, thank you, Alana, for you know putting together this ambitious, fabulous project. Wow, what a great idea! Oh, well, it's my pleasure. We do actually have another question. Do you feel up to answering another one? Yeah, I, I have no place to go and nothing to do, so <laughs> you could stay here. Well, till eight o'clock when I'm doing an interview with Avram Latek, Rabbi Avram Latek, on. Um, his, I don't know, his Facebook Live or his podcast or 8 p.m. <laughs> somewhere. It's on my, it's on my Facebook page. So. Um, questions? Yes. Um, yeah, somebody wants to know about the, what she calls the modern klezmer sound as opposed to, uh, do we have any evidence that at the time of Berogoski and before, fiddlers had the same typical sound modern klezmer violin players have? Now there's a wow. wide question. I wonder what that is, that modern sound. What is, is that? Pascal there? Does she I need more like what what is the modern sound? Like what makes Actually, it... where's Pascal? Um, uh, I'm here. Oh sorry, him. Yeah. Pascal. <laughs> uh, but I don't know about about uh, I don't know how to define the sound, but there is you know those special effects that you have on and many fiddlers have today when they play klezmer. So this is why I'm yes. referring to. Do you mean, do you mean like a cracks like? That, yeah, that exactly. Special... Yeah, so that is part of the heart and soul of klezmer. I mean, every, it's an imitation of um, cantorial singing, of Yiddish folk singing, clarinetists do it. Uh, every clarinetist does it. You'll even hear it in accordion playing, and um, it's essential to the klezmer sound. Now, if you listen to old recordings of fiddle players, um, some of them have it, you know, the old 78s of like Abe Schwartz and others. Others play a little bit more plainly. I think, you know, probably a matter of how much technique people had. Um, and some of them, like I spent some time with Leon Schwartz when he was in his late 80s and in the 1980s. And uh, he would do it on some tunes, but not on others. So um, I don't, that's not, I don't think it's the, that's a modern sound. I think that it is the klezmer fiddle sound. Now, people tend to then, you know, create their own sounds. I ended up kind of creating my own sound, which was sort of amalgam of the um, Greek and Turkish fiddle playing that. I love and I was playing in a Greek nightclub when I was young for a while and it seemed like those timbres sounded good in class when I brought those in but um, I thought maybe you meant by modern like kind of rocked out or electrified or you know with improvisation and jazz style improvisation but um, but the effects are actually old. Excellent thank you. Sure. Great question. Yeah. Um, I had another question about Berogovsky Suite, actually, in terms of um, how you selected the material uh, from Berogovsky that you were going to use um, with Uli. Oh, well, so appropriate to Mother's Day. What happened was I was on bed rest when I was pregnant. And uh, so for months, I, it, it was like, you know, the, the dress rehearsal for now. For months, I couldn't go anywhere or do anything. And um, I ended up going through the whole Berogovsky book, the, um, you know, the instrumentals, uh, not this part. And although some of these are in that, but anyway, I went through it. I uh, harmonized it. You know, I add chords to everything. I memorized the tunes. Like, I basically spent my whole pregnancy <laughs> <laughs> I'm Berogowski. And the album um, had a very long gestation. It was sort of like an elephant baby, you know. So um, it actually took 10 years for it to come out. I, 
Uli and I were working together, uh, playing concerts, and it evolved very slowly. We recorded it, and then I sat on it for a decade because I was like, oh, it's not good enough. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so it only came out a couple of years ago, but actually, I recorded it a long time ago. Oh, wow. And how do we choose it? It was, it was the tunes that we fooled around with the tunes that I had harmonized and, um, you know, some of them we found something fun and interesting, different to do with, and that's how we picked it. Oh, wow. Well. We're glad you came up with another one. <laughs> it was worth the wait. Thank you. Next one. What's anything in the, in the uh, pipeline? Oh, oh, I thought you were um, asking for another question. Um, yeah, uh, you know, I, I, I made another album, actually. It was of all Hasidic Nagunam, <laughs> of Lubavitcher Nagunam, years ago. It was a project of a Hasidic, of a, of a Lubavitcher rabbi, who, despite the fact that I'm a woman, was like fine with making an album of, he wanted me to do klezmer versions of these Chabad Nagunam. And he called that album Vat Kazak, which is a portmanteau of vodka and K Kazak. <laughs> and um, that I also made that one years ago. In a way, it was my second album. Um, Jeff Warshower is on it playing uh, mandolin. And uh, so then he re-released it 10 years later. He, he overdubbed drummer Alex Alan, Aaron Alexander onto the original tracks. And he retitled it and gave it a new album cover. Um, and he called it Hasidic Breeze. So, um, <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm always working on a new album. Wow, we had it here first, Hasidic Breeze. Okay. So you can find those online. I can, I can you know, send them to you and Vodka Sack or Hasidic Breeze. Fantastic. Brilliant. Oh, well, um, if there's nothing more coming up on the chat, Patty says, thanks. Um, no, I can't see anybody else asking any questions. They're all just too wowed by five, five niggunim in a row. Thank you so much, Alicia. It's fantastic. Thank you. And uh, thank you, everybody. I'm going to cancel the spotlight and let's have a look at everybody. Right. Bye-bye. <laughs> thanks, Alicia.